For me, the idea of a film is like, a, there's like this, this formal aspect of a film. It has a beginning, middle, and end to film. You go to a cinema, you watch it, and, which is fine. But what I was really interested in with that project is to break through that. And because I, I wanted this thing to work on the internet, I wanted to work in cinema, I wanted to work as sort of like a, like a graffiti. It's like, it's like taking, you know, I mean, the way that graffiti works in, in life is an artist goes and he, and he spray paints a wall or a car or a street or, or whatever, and it's like he puts his mark on, on reality. And then his, his artwork becomes part of this environment. So I'm, I'm, I'm really interested in having the film become part of the environment because it's a deconstruction of kind of a well-known film that was made about the situation in, 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 uh, in uh, Louisiana. So I just, instead of taking, instead of making a movie in Louisiana, I just wanted to make a movie about making a mark in history. I mean, a movie I'm calling it, I, I fell into that trap. Making something which is a mark on, on this history and on, on this place. And it's not really uh, a, for, a movie formally, it's kind of a, an, it's like an action, it's like a Jackson Pollock kind of painting. I mean, I, I thought about that piece for like, when I was thinking about it, I thought about it for three months. And I sat down, and in, in one week I finished it, you know, and it was basta, it's done. I just, it was like an action thing, you know, but I, you know, it's like, I just wanted to get it done. So for me, I don't want to, I don't want to categorize it as a film, I want to categorize it as a sort of an action. So I, I, I use the word graffiti, maybe it's not a good word, but it's like an action painting, you know. I mean, I'm actually painting on it with very ugly Im video images and, 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 you know, just using the ugliness of what, what the computer can do in a very simple way on these black and white images and to, to sort of create this kind of um, contemporary kind of feel to it, which is the, the, the feel of what we see when we're on a computer, for instance, because the colors on, on the computer and in, 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 on the internet are, so, are really kind of ugly, you know, the graphics, the, the colors they use and the way they use them. So I just wanted to play with that, those ideas. It's the only one, it's the only one that I know of that was done in this, uh, in, 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 uh, in Louisiana, and it's a story, look, I mean, there's so many reasons why. BP is an oil company that bought Standard Oil. Standard Oil financed this film. The film was made in 1946, I think, the original film. It was made about the oil industry, it's financed by the oil, oil industry. It's a propaganda film for the oil industry. It, extraordinarily, this film is on, uh, I think it's on a list of 100, important films in, in America, in, 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 you know, in, in Washington. I mean, it is, it is, it's, it's, it, 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 the film illustrates, the film that Flaherty made illustrates how the system will take something, and it's the corporate system we're talking about here, you know, we're talking about the Rockefellers, you know, the most wealthy people in the world, in the history of the world, um, manipulating artists and manipulate, ma manipulating reality so that it suits their needs. So it's the only film that I can possibly think of, uh, you know, doing it because, it's, again, the film is uh, is made by Flaherty. Flaherty was an artist, I believe, and he, he's made some great films. And it, my favorite film of his is *Mana Varan*, made on I think it's a, an island off the uh, an island off the coast of Ireland. It's an extraordinary film, but this film is is a far cry from that film. But but the other thing is that Flaherty made *Nanak of the North*. *Nanak of the North*, I believe, was financed by. A uh, company, a French company that makes furs, that made fur coats. So, na so I'm not. I'm not saying that that, that Flaherty is necessarily morally in a, in a wrong place because you have to get money to make your films. And I don't know enough about the story to really make a judgment call. But if he's getting money from the f the, the fur industry to make this film and in, in, uh, in this famous film that he made called Nanak of the North, and then he's getting f uh, money from the oil company to make this film about the oil industry in in, in uh, in Louisiana, there is something interesting to explore here for, as, as an artist, you know, uh, a filmmaker in, in this time that we're living in with all these incredible tragedies going on, and, or eco ecological tragedies going on. So yes, I mean, you know, for me, it's like a great choice. Well, I mean, look, it, the, um, we live in a sort of situation right now where for filmmakers who are independent, and I'm not talking about, uh, you know, like big Hollywood films or big French films that are financed by the system, I'm talking about probably, you know, like 85% of filmmaking, you know, is, 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 you know, filmmakers make movies and in a way it's kind of easy to make a movie, you know, I mean, in terms of, you, yeah, you can make a movie, you, you know, I'm not saying it's easy to make a good movie, but it's, you, you make a movie, but the, the difficult part is not 
making the movie. The difficult part is where do you show these films? You know, what, what, what is open in the world for these kind of films? What cinemas are open? Where can these films play? This is the real problem. And this is, this is dominated by the corporate system, dominated by, by companies that really don't care about anything but making huge amounts of money. And they'll, they'll do that with the easiest kind of product. Because the idea is that the, 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 there's a term in English, the lowest common denominator. Most, most commercial art, you know, whether it's music or, or, or cinema or, or whatever's made for the public, television, is made for the lowest common denominator. It's, it's for the stupidest people, you know? And the companies like that because it's safe. Well, by, taking, by, 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 by making cinema into this kind of, um, into the, into this kind of like lowest common denominator kind of art for the, for the masses, they've slowly sort of eliminated the cinemas. They've, they've made the place where people can watch movies uh, like, very, it's very difficult for filmmakers to get into those places. So you need film festivals like this. But, but I love film festivals because they're great, but I think it's really dangerous to, 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 to only have that kind of place for your films. So there's a war in my, in my mind and you have to fight it, you know. No, absolutely. The only difference is that, you know, I mean, I, I like Jacob Vertov's work. Um, he's from eastern part of Poland and um, he changed his name and he became Jigov Vertov. But the thing is that he was making propaganda films for the Soviet system, which is, okay, they, they believe in the dream, right? Now, that, uh, whether it was a sophisticated uh, uh, dream or, or a realistic dream or a political dream or whatever kind it is, that's okay, because humanity has the dream. And by making propaganda for films for the, for the Soviet system, obviously he believed in something and he dedicated his art to this, to, 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 to helping humanity become something better. Now, obviously the Soviet system failed, you know, and it's not his fault because he was there in the beginning, but if you're making propaganda, then it's kind of dangerous, you know what I mean? So this was the early part of cinema. So, so he, I think they were very enthusiastic about this, this new cinema, new political situation, fighting, uh, fighting the, the, essentially the right-wing elements, um, but, at this point, I think that we have to do it a little bit differently. You know, I, don't, I think that we cannot say that, okay, we're, we cannot embrace left-wing or right-wing politics. We have, to, we have to sort of find another way to do that. And that's what I'm interested in doing. Well, no, I mean, what's, okay, in terms of methods, uh, he, he deconstructed cinema and he reconstructed montage, editing, this kind of thing. I mean, you know, what he did was pretty amazing, um, as, the, as, uh, as did Eisenstein. Um, but I think that now we have to sort of deconstruct again. Because, you know, in the last, I think in the last 20 years, last 25, 30 years, in a lot of ways cinema has gotten, the techniques of cinema has gotten more and more conservative. Because there is this pressure from the corporate system to make something that's like palatable. So the problem is that if you come up with an idea that's kind of cool, they will buy you, and your idea then becomes like a part of the way the system works. So I'm, I'm trying to, I'm like investigating how to deconstruct the, the whole storytelling method so that it's not cool. It's interesting, but it's not cool, and, the, and, and they're not going to take my methods. I'm, I'm sort of fighting t the coolness factor. You know, like for instance, when uh, MTV started, they had this thing called frames per minute, or I'm sorry, cuts per minute, cuts per minute, and then it became cuts per second. You know, boom, boom, boom. It's all artificial to keep this, you know, this fucking rhythm going so that the audience is wa watching this thing. They're not really interested, but, they, but, but it keeps this tension going, you know? So, so I don't want to do that. I want to do something different. I want to sort of deconstruct how a story is being told and do it in my own kind of way so that you look at the idea of storytelling in a different way because I think it's sort of time for that. So a like camera war is kind of a way to do that where you can watch the chapters in different ways and, 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 and over time, and every time you, you look at it, you know, and you, re, you know, like you look at chapter 14 first, then you look at chapter one, then you look, you look at the end of chapter 18, et cetera, et cetera, you start, another story gets uh, told, and you're kind of deconstructing reality, and you're kind of looking at things in a different way as a viewer. But you're not looking at it as, in terms of information, you're also looking at it aesthetically, you know? So you're like, you're getting, you're kind of getting a deconstruction of, of reality so that you can understand it in ways that is only good for you, for you personally, you know? So that you understand, like for instance, if you're a trained scientist, you'll look at it one way. If you're like a, a student, you'll look at it another way. But you'll always have these interpretations, so the important thing is to question the reality that's going on, you know? And not 
to have the films be like a package that this is how you think or this is how you're entertained, you know? So it's a, it's a deconstruction thing. So that, that project was like a one-year project experiment, and I learned a lot from that because what happened is that, you know, you, like as a filmmaker, you know, you raise money and you, and you finally get your money and then you have the pressure from television and et cetera, and you, and you kind of forget to experiment, you know? Because you, you just, you're, you're happy to make it your film. But, but with that project, I started experimenting with music, cutting things, taking sound down when somebody's talking, I mean, all kinds of stuff. Not caring if the image is good or not, you know? Over lighting, shooting with a telephone, shooting with a, with a still camera, all kinds of techniques for playing with music and sort of really having fun with it so that I arrive to something and then I say, now I'm looking at it and I say, well, listen, I learned this, 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 let me try these techniques in, in, a, in a bigger film that I, that I want to uh, make, that, which I'm making now. But I think it's good to have fun, <laughs> to have fun with this, with, 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 with uh, cinema, you know? And, and I, can, I consider, even though it's on the internet, I still consider it cinema, it's a new kind of cinema. And I've been shooting for like two and a half years, almost three years, it's about, the film is about um, how, how Poland, and, the, and Poland is an example of, 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 of the bigger problems that are going on in the world, how Poland is being uh, purchased by Western corporations, by multinational corporations, and being chopped up into little pieces. And essentially what they're doing is they're, 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 they're producing things in Poland, and they're, with Polish people, they are cre creating consumers. Uh, and they are, con because it's a, it's a rel relatively wealthy country, there's a huge population there of 35 plus mil million people who are ready consumers. They want to consume something new. So these corporations have come into Poland and they're, they're, they're doing something there, which is quite insidious. So I found, I found some farmers that I'm working with in Poland in order to illustrate this, and I'm connecting it to a new political party in France. Uh, called Europe Ecology because it's a party that doesn't believe in left or right. It, believe, it believes that the, the only way to change the world now is through ecological means. And um, uh, Danny Conbendit, Danny the Red, who was like a big figure in 68 in France, he's, he's part of this party, so he's in the film. As is Josy Bovi, the famous French farmer who uh, destroyed McDonald's, you know, he's an activist now. And uh, Eva Jolie, who's a, a lawyer, she's a Norwegian lawyer who lives in the in France, and she's an extraordinary person. She knows how corporations work. So, I'm, I'm, so it's like it's like several stories brought together into one, and and um, it's an experiment. And um, I think that by looking at the farmers in Poland, the way the film is going to look at them and connecting them with this Western European uh, way of dealing with uh, with with politics will will be will create kind of another way to look at uh, something that's going on. So it's kind of, I'm not being, I'm being a little evasive because I'm still creating it. So I can't tell you everything about the story, but this is the parameters that I'm working with.